Hi cozy friends! Today we're doing cozy game matchmaking number two. These qualities that we're doing today are a mix of just some new ones I came up with and suggestions that you gave on the last video, so thank you. Let's jump into the first one. <sighs> Gotta get out my, my notes, my expert notes. If you are an interior designer type, if you can't stop watching HGTV, you can't get yourself away from the home section at Target, if Joanna Gaines is like a mother figure to you at this point, if you've changed that one little decor setting about five times in one year, you know which one I'm talking about. If that all sounds like you, these are the games I'm gonna pair you with. The first is House Flipper. So this is very straightforward. It is what the name suggests. You flip houses. And I love this game. I tried it on stream. You basically do everything from the paint to cleaning to putting in new plumbing and decorating. And as you progress, you get more and more tasks that you can actually do, which is really cool. I also love that there's kind of a technical planning element to this because you can negotiate the houses that you're selling and you can kind of choose which houses you wanna flip. And so there's definitely a business acumen element in here and that's really fun. The next is Tools Up and Tools Up is basically the same chaoticness as overcooked, as moving out, but you are renovating houses. So you're changing the wallpapers, you're painting, yada, yada, yada. You get it, home renovation, but chaos and multiplayer. So you will love this. And my honorable mention for this category is My Universe Interior Designer. This just came out in late December. Think the kind of like my baby, my uh, fashion designer games that used to be on the DS, but Interior Designer. And My Universe has a ton of different games like this. Like they actually have a babysitter one and a teacher one. So if you're interested in any of those, go for it. But Interior Designer, it's perfect, it's perfect. Now the next kind of person is the sentimental one. If you love capturing a moment, whether it's capturing it to hold on to the beauty of that moment or to hold on to the special memories it gives you. If you're the friend or partner who gives very sentimental gifts, like photo books and things like that, here are the games I'm gonna match you with. The first is Unpacking, and I've talked about Unpacking before. It is a beautiful game about moving through life, moving into new places. You kind of learn about the character through unpacking all of their belongings at different stages of life. And there's also a photography element of this, so once you unpack everything, you can take little snapshots. And it's perfect, perfect for somebody who really values memories and different stages of life and what those mean to you. The next game I'm pairing you with is Nostalgic Train. This is a walking simulator set in a Japanese countryside. You're both solving the mystery of the abandoned town and reflecting on your character's memories and life experiences. There's also just a free exploration mode where you can just walk around this town that's steeped in nostalgia and comfort and beauty and memories <laughs> and just explore it and kind of reflect. And my honorable mention here is East Shade. And East Shade is not on Switch, it's on PlayStation, it's on Mac, it's on PC, and it's on Xbox. Hopefully it'll come to Switch soon, but it is a beautiful adventure walking simulator game as well, where you're just adventuring in these beautiful, beautiful sceneries and you're painting them. And so you're kind of a traveling painter and you sell your paintings to the town's people and you do tasks for them and they help you out in return. And it's it's just a lovely game for capturing a beautiful moment. The next personality type is the animal lover. And I know there's a lot of you out there. So if you are somebody who can't go to an animal shelter without coming home with a little furry friend, if your TikTok is filled with cute cat and dog videos and you still are checking to see if it's a bones or no bones day, then these are the games for you. The first is Calico. There is just no better game for an animal lover. Calico is the game for all of us animal lovers out there because you're just walking around discovering animals and bringing them back to your little animal cafe and giving them a home. It is so wholesome, it's so cheery and cozy and bright and you're helping the townspeople with little tasks, you're doing a lot of fetch tasks and there's a little cat city where you actually do tasks for little cats that are walking around. It is just the most adorable 
game ever. And if you love animals, you will love running around with these animals in your hands. And you can put them on your head as well. You can put the animals on your head and walk around and swim as well. So <laughs> this game is perfect for you animal lovers. The next game is Little Friends, Dogs and Cats. Now, if you are a Nintendogs person on the DS, this, you have to get this game. You just have to. It's basically the same game, but there's also cats. So you can adopt dogs, you can talk cats, you kind of build this little collection of your dogs and cats and you raise them, you train them, you take care of them, you bring them on walks, you teach them tricks, you dress them. So if you're an animal lover to the extent that you love taking care of the animals, you love the nurturing aspect of them, then this game is perfect for you. And my honorable mention game is Windstorm Start of a Great Friendship. This game just recently came out. You are following this woman on a journey to befriend this stallion, but you're also taking care of all of these horses at your stables and you're riding around on horses and I don't know what but it sounds like a like Barbie horse game and I love that. <laughs> so if you're a horse girl, if you're a horse person, this game is for you. The next personality type is the problem solver. If you love puzzles and riddles, if you cannot stop until you've found the solution to a problem, if you refuse to look up solutions to in-game puzzles because you are determined to find the answer yourself, these are the games I'm gonna pair you with. The first is Untitled Goose Game. This is the most frustratingly cute game I've ever played. It is adorable because you're walking around as a little duck who's just creating absolute chaos in this town. I didn't realize how much of a puzzle problem solving aspect there was to this because you find yourself in these situations where you have to get certain items or you have to do certain things. You have to check off all of these checklist items of just causing chaos and you have to figure out how to do it in a certain way to not like trigger the townspeople to shoot you out or trigger the townspeople to like take the item back. There's skill to this. There's planning to this there is problem solving to this, so it is perfect. The next game I have for you problem solvers is Unravel 2. This is a great game to play with somebody, and it's a kind of gentle problem solving game, I would call it. The problems and the obstacles aren't that complicated, but it's really fun to kind of riddle your way through it with somebody else, and you're attached by a string to the other person, so it's not like you can kind of go off and do your own thing. You have to work together to solve these problems, and uh, I love it, and it's a beautiful story story along with it. The next personality type is the witchy spooky type. If you're somebody who feels alive when Halloween comes around, if your closet has seen only one color and that is black, if you love to lean into the dark witchy spooky vibes, here are the games I'm matching you with. The first game is Dark Arcana the Carnival. This is for my hidden picture puzzle people. This genre is the perfect combo of problem solving, like art of deduction, puzzles, and a hidden picture. They just do it so perfectly where they craft everything and, and balance everything so it doesn't feel like you're just sitting there finding objects the whole time. It's it's always engaging and always fun. And if you haven't given one a try, I wouldn't set it aside just quite yet. Just give one a try. And like I've said before, these are the best to buy when they're on sale. They go on sale for like dirt cheap. So I wouldn't get it full price. I would just wait for it to go on sale. But I also love that these genres have so many different themes and this one is the perfect witchy spooky theme. The next game is Don't Starve Together, which is a multiplayer spooky survival game. And you can play with friends that you know, or you can play online with strangers. But this game has a very Tim Burton-esque vibe to it. And you're crafting, you're gathering materials, all of those things to survive in this world that has a lot of mystery to it because there always has to be mystery in these games. And the last personality type is the daydreamer. If you love to kind of maladaptive daydream into a life that is not your own, it is completely different. If you sit at your job often imagining how nice it would be to just run away and have a simpler life with a simpler job or a job out in nature, these are the games I'm gonna pair you with. The first is Alba's Wildlife Adventure. This is a game about a little girl who goes to visit her family in the Mediterranean. And you're on this beautiful island that has castles and beaches and just 
beautiful scenery, but the main goal is to save the wildlife on the island. I love that this game gives you the freedom to go throughout the game at your own pace and in your own way. It purposely doesn't make the storyline very linear and you kind of help out town people, they help you back, and you just identify wildlife and relax on this Mediterranean island while you save the wildlife. And I just think that it's so wholesome, so cute, and such a great way to escape your real life and imagine that you're on this beautiful island you know, contributing to the betterment of nature. And the last game is Firewatch. This game is about a man escaping his life to become a fire lookout watch in nature. This takes place in Wyoming and similar to Lake, which I also recommend for this personality type. Your choices kind of dictate how the story is going to play out. So there's a lot of dialogue and a lot of choice and you're discovering mysteries because again there's always a mystery. You're kind of alone and you have one contact person on a walkie-talkie and you're exploring nature and looking out for fires and it's one of those just really taking in the scenery and assuming this character's identity and being somebody else for a little while to appreciate the story and the setting. And I think that's perfect for the daydreamers. Those are all of my matches for today. I hope you enjoyed them. I always love doing these. If you have any personality types you'd like me to cover on the next one, let me know in the comments. And I love you. Stay cozy. Bye.